than the gunner training dot com. And I'm going to back up a little bit so that you can see my hands as we discuss these different strategies when it comes to reading body language, specifically the hands. There are three things that I'd like you to pay attention to this week when you're communicating with other people. Three signs, signals that people send that I'd like you to look for. The first one is the ham scratch. This one I'd like you to look for specifically when you're in an information gathering session or somebody is telling you something and you think they might be lying. Because what happens is, you know those lie detector machines that people get hooked up to? Uh, there are so many things that go on in the body when we are communicating, which is why I frequently talk in my communication training about how we are communicating on a conscious level and a subconscious level and a biochemical level, a genetic level, an atomic level. When we are communicating, I think most of us know it is not simply we're processing the words, listening to them, and responding to them. A lot is going on. And in our bodies, we have many involuntary biochemical reactions that occur based on what people say to us and what we say to other people. One of the biochemical reactions that naturally occurs when we tell a lie is our capillaries expand. And when that happens, that causes different areas of the body to suddenly be itchy. Therefore, when you see somebody who is telling you something, start to scratch their hands like this. It's not necessarily just a nervous gesture. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. It's not just a tick. It's actually that they have an itch that they're scratching. That itch, however, is caused by, again, expanding capillaries, which is caused by telling a lie. Of course, not all itches are caused by lies. However, that is something that frequently happens when we are telling a lie. Those capillaries expand because of the increased blood flow, which causes different areas, generally the hands, to itch. Therefore, people will start to scratch them. So if you see somebody telling you something with a straight face and a smile, they might be nodding their head. They might even be giving you this gesture, which, as we talked about, I believe, last week's shows. I'm honest and I'm telling you everything I know. But then all of a sudden, you see them do one of these. Take note of that, because if you know the signs to look for, you can become a human lie detector simply because you do your communication homework. This week, I'd like you to look for people scratching their hands as they talk to you and are telling you something, and take note of that. Put that in your arsenal, and that, along with other clues, can help you really accurately determine if somebody is or is not telling you the truth. Remember, hand scratch tends to signal a lot. The next gesture I'd like to talk about is the wringing of the hands. When we are under stress, especially rapid onset stress, what happens is the brain sends a signal to us to soothe. You know, we are looking to be soothed when we are under stress. So what children tend to do is run to their parents. But as adults, what we tend to do is self-soothe. And so doing something like this, when people are listening to us or talking to us, tends to signal that they are suddenly under stress and the body sends a signal to them to do what's called self-soothing. So they start to do things like this to try and eliminate some of the stress that they suddenly feel. So in the upcoming week, what I would like you to do is look for that. Look for people who are starting to do gestures like this as you are communicating with them. Because for example, let's say that you're training somebody and they start to do something like this as they're listening to you, what that could signal is that they're thinking to themselves, oh, I have no idea what they're saying to me. I don't understand. I'm totally lost, but I don't want to look stupid and ask a dumb question. So if you see somebody doing this, it can mean they are under distress for several different reasons. It's not necessarily in this case because they are lying, but you always want to take note, of course, to the signs people are sending that signal, I'm under stress, when you're communicating with them so that you can change your course of communication and try to eliminate some of that stress. You might want to ask some questions. You know, tell me, how are you feeling about where we are so far? Tell me, what are your thoughts on this? You might want to give them a tap and tilt. Remember, we talked about the tap and tilt. Again, visual communication is much more powerful than any words that we could say. So if you do see somebody's under stress and wringing their hands like this, you might give them a simple tap on the shoulder and say, so how are you feeling? How's everything going so far? And give them a tap on the elbow and a head tilt to the side. That can send signals to their body that again causes a biochemical reaction that sends out chemicals to the brain that helps them 
de-stress. It's interesting how when we communicate with other people, it's as if we're going into their brain and they're going into our brain and they're going through the pharmacy that are the chemicals that our brain releases and choosing that one and that one and that one and that one. So looking for certain signs such as hand wringing or hand scratching lets you know, uh-oh, they just had some toxic chemicals released into their body and are trying to soothe. And you can immediately counter that by doing things such as saying, how are you doing so far? Everything all right? And give that tap and tilt, which then goes into their brain and counteracts those toxins by releasing some feel-good chemicals in their brain. And the last hand gesture that I would like you to pay attention to this week is rubbing for warmth. What tends to happen when we experience sudden onset anxiety, meaning we see or hear or think of something that immediately causes us stress, a high level of stress. We go from feeling pretty good to all of a sudden feeling stressed. The body temperature naturally will drop significantly sometimes, and we feel that. And so instinctively, people will start to rub themselves trying to generate heat. Therefore, if you notice somebody with whom you're communicating start to rub different parts of their body, what that will signal to you is they're suddenly under stress. So again, that means it's time for you to pause and reflect on what's happening in this communication situation. Are you intending to cause them stress? For example, if you are in an information gathering session, you know, if there's something that happened and you're trying to get to the bottom of it and you're asking somebody deliberate questions, maybe you're asking closed-ended question, closed-ended question, closed-ended question, and then open-ended question, which is a strategy that we'll be discussing next week when you are investigating. If you are deliberately trying to cause somebody stress, which might make them slip up and tell you something that they would otherwise have preferred to keep hidden, a sign like this can show you you're on the right track. Again, a sign like this can show you you're on the right track. If, however, you're trying to make the person feel at ease, or if you're simply trying to open up the lines of communication and you see this, that could signal that maybe you asked a question they do not feel comfortable answering. That could mean that you're explaining things in a way that is not their preferred method of learning. For example, they could be a visual person and you're explaining something in more of an auditory way. They could be an auditory person and you're simply showing them what to do. They could be a kinesthetic hands-on person and what they want to do is actually do whatever it is that you're trying to show them rather than hear it or see it. So reflect on what the cause of this stress might be when you see it in other people and that gives you an opportunity to change your course of communication and eliminate that stress. And remember, if you see somebody simply scratching their hand, that generally does not signal that you are saying or doing something to necessarily cause them stress. What that tends to signal is expanded capillaries caused by them not telling the truth. So this week, again, look for the three hand signals, scratching the hand, wringing of the hands, rubbing different parts of the body. And when you see those signals, ask yourself, what do I think they mean? Because generally your instincts are correct. And what could I now do to change my course of communication if I believe I should. Now you might be wondering then, what am I going to do with my hands? Because sometimes we all find ourselves in situations where we are under stress. You know, I'm gonna just assume that we're not going around telling lies and wondering what to do with our hands so that we don't give it away. But let's just say that you do find it difficult to know what to do with your hands when you're talking with somebody, whether you're standing up or at a table. Remember that in general, a common, rule is you can always interlace your fingers. So if you're sitting at a table, you can always interlace your fingers and put them on the table. And that tends to help keep your hands under control. We are less likely to, for example, quickly scratch our ear if we feel a, a, an itch there or quickly scratch the back of our neck or bring them together if our fingers are interlaced. Of course, you don't want to do that, you know, but if you sit down and just interlace your fingers and plant them there, that tends to send a message of a cool, calm, and collected communicator, and we're going to be less likely to fidget or move our hands away because they are because our fingers are already interlaced. And the same goes for when you're standing up. Remember, if we're standing up, we don't want to interlace our fingers in front of us, but if you interlace your fingers behind you, if otherwise you feel uncomfortable because you don't know what to do with your hands, and you simply say, I'm going to interlace my fingers behind my back, remember that sends a message of the ultimate in self-confidence. So if you're wondering now what to do with your hands so that you don't give some unintentional signal, interlace your fingers.
Either put them in front of you on a table, or if you're standing up, behind you, and there you go. Easy. Now you know what to do with your hands so that you don't unintentionally send a signal, oh, I'm under stress, oh, I'm experiencing sudden anxiety, or I'm a big fat liar. <laughs> and those are your hand signals to look for for the week. Now we're going to move along to our danger phrases and power phrases for the week. Stop using danger phrases. We're going to give you the power. And what I'd like to start off with are our danger phrases for home. Of course, our danger phrases for home can also be applied at work and vice versa. So when I specifically categorize danger phrases or power phrases for home or work, of course, they are things that can be applied in both areas under normal circumstances. I just like to point out when danger phrases or power phrases are going to be more common, either in the workplace or at home. So our first danger phrases and power phrases are for home. And the first phrase is, I don't appreciate. So remember, this week, please be aware of if you use this. These free effective communication skills training course videos brought to you by communication expert keynote speaker, Dan O'Connor.